When crafting a story, it is important to create both characters and a universe that are believable to the viewer. This is usually achieved by creating a world that is, at least at first, familiar to us all. By creating characters that remind us of aspects of ourselves. When introduced to Jessie, we are given a woman looking for her missing brother. Dr. Darling is portrayed as an excitable scientist. Ozzy is shown as a janitor within the oldest house. As the narrative unfolds, however, the familiar world and characters begin to develop into something much greater than we first realized. None more so than the innocuous janitor. Within the first few minutes of Jessie arriving in the oldest house, she comes across Ati mopping up the hallway. He comments that she is there for an interview and guides her past the building lockdown into the executive sector. Throughout the narrative, Jessie encounters Ati only a few times. Mostly, this includes doing odd janitorial and repair assignments for him in the maintenance sector. Near the end of the story, the janitor goes on his well-earned vacation, and it is only by tracking him down to the foundation that they have their final words. Despite only appearing briefly within the game, Ati may be one of the most universally important characters in the Remedyverse. Before discussing the relevance of the unusual janitor, we must understand his motivation. To know that, we will have to discuss some basics of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics states that the total entropy of an isolated system cannot decrease over time. In simple terms, entropy is the measure of disorder within a system. A low entropy system is more ordered, while a high entropy system is more chaotic. In essence, what the second law states is a system naturally grows more chaotic with time, and it requires work to bring back order. An easy example of this is the states of water. Ice, being a solid, is a low entropy system as the molecules are frozen in place. As a liquid, water is a moderate entropy system, as the molecules have free range but are still stuck together due to hydrogen bonding. Steam, or any other gas, is a high entropy system as the molecules are disjointed and attempt to diffuse evenly throughout the system's space. Entropy is a spontaneous process. If you set ice on the counter and walk away, it wants to melt, then it wants to evaporate. Just like iron wants to rust, and your yard wants to become overgrown. When left on its own, entropy will drive every aspect of life into chaos, and it takes rigorous effort to maintain order. If entropy is the universe's natural vector towards chaos, who among us fights this metaphorical battle every day? These would be the mechanics who repair our vehicles, the contractor who fixes our home after a fire, and more specific to the story of control, these would be the janitors. Their jobs are to take a chaotic system and bring order from it. In the abstract sense, entropy can apply to anything. A clean sink is a low entropy system, and one filled with dirty dishes is a system of high entropy. It takes work put into the system to fight against the entropy in our daily lives. Every time you do your laundry, mow the lawn, clean the toilet, or go to the gym, you are waging an endless war on entropy in your day-to-day -day life. Ati the janitor and those who reside within the maintenance sector spend their lives fighting against entropy in one form or another. The first mission that Jesse receives from Ati is to repair the coolant system and energy converters down in maintenance. These are mundane tasks to be sure, but don't mistake mundane for unimportant. If the garbage man who comes every week took a few months off, what would your neighborhood look like? Your home, your yard, the streets, all would be full of trash. The stench would be all-consuming. Insects would begin to swarm and disease would spread. Our personal health would suffer. These sorts of mundane tasks are essential to our eternal battle against entropy. Ati, however, dances to this never-ending tango with entropy on a whole different level. As mentioned earlier, the janitor was the one who guided Jessie past the bureau lockdown, telling her she needed to go to the interview. And what job was she interviewing for? To be his assistant. If the director's duty is to be the assistant of the janitor, exactly what kind of a janitor is he? His concept of cleaning a clog out of the pipes is to prevent an extra-dimensional entity from creeping into the bureau. When asked to burn the trash in the furnace, 
we learn that a non-corporeal entity resides within the flames, and that it demands human sacrifice. Only by feeding it barrels of toxic waste can Ati and Jesse keep the entity pacified. Cleaning the mold that originates from an extra-dimensional threshold is another example of these janitorial duties. If left unchecked, these threats would spell calamity for the Bureau, and by extension, the world at large. However, rather than being seen as a crisis, Ati has all of these threats handled to the point where they seem like menial chores. Ati the janitor, obviously, is more than he seems. In a memo found within the Bureau, Dr. Tan filed a complaint when Ati was found mopping in a restricted access area, wondering how he got past the ashtray maze. Salvador even gives instructions to Arish to deter any questions about Ati and to not allow anyone to intervene with his day-to-day -day routine. When questioned, the head of security simply says it is a classified matter. Now that we have established Ati's role in the basics of entropy, let us look to other clues about the mysterious janitor. The name Ati can be tracked back to two places, one being the Egyptian goddess of misfortune, the other is derived from an ocean god of the depths and fishing in Finnish mythology. Due to Remedy being a Finnish company, it seems more likely that the janitor's namesake is from the latter. If Ati is an ocean god, what is the ocean within the Remedyverse? The first time we hear about the cosmic ocean is in the prologue of Alan Wake during his nightmare. Thomas Zane recites a poem that discusses this. I have something important to tell you. It goes like this. For he did not know that beyond the lake he called home lies a deeper, darker ocean green, where waves are both wilder and more serene. To its ports I've been. To its ports I've been. Do you understand? It is not until the end of the game that Alan realizes what Zane meant. It's not. The ocean is the grand reality, the multiverse that encompasses all. The lake Alan called home is only a small part of that ocean. It is this world that we experience. It does not go unnoticed that when Jesse tracks down Ati at the start of his holiday, she is forced to go through the Ocean View Motel into the janitor's office in order to find him. Various doors reside within the motel that all lead to other realities. As such, the ocean view could be considered an island within the infinite ocean that overlooks reality in its entirety. This is where it all comes together. Ati is an ocean god, and the ocean view motel overlooks all realities. If Ati is the janitor of the ocean view, he is not simply the bureau's janitor, he is the janitor of everything. His war that is waged against entropy and chaos is a universal one. Every lake within this grand ocean is his responsibility. Throughout the narrative, Ati is constantly listening to the Sankaran Tango. When translated, it follows the story of the hero archetype. The chorus of the tune goes like this. Alone, the hero travels deeper into the night. This burden on his shoulders would be there always, like a promise. In the game, this fool is beaten again and again, but only a moment of rest and death is given, already having to return. Every hero gives their entire being to stand against the forces of chaos. These threats come in many forms. For Alan, it was the Dark Presence. For Jesse, the Hiss Resonance. For Jack, it was time itself. The hero, however, will never succeed. Entropy is a natural law of the universe, and therefore, it cannot be defeated. The hero only acts as a temporary bulwark, preventing the raging river of chaos from drowning reality in its depths. So the question is, is it a pointless endeavor to fight a battle that can never be won? The answer is no. It is not pointless. It is in fact a truly honorable pursuit. Even knowing that entropy can never be defeated, Heroes choose to stand up in every age to wage that eternal war. Without them, everything would fall into chaos. It should be apparent now why Ati was rooting for Jesse to be appointed director. He needed an assistant, one who could carry on his janitorial duties. 
It is only after she was appointed that Ati announced his vacation was coming up. Later in the Foundation, he tells her that, for Finn, holidays are holy. Imagine working a job 24-7 for an untold number of centuries, knowing that if you took a day off, the universe could end. Now imagine that an assistant was hired that was proven capable of carrying on your duties. It does seem like a good time to take a very well-earned vacation. Anyone who's ever worked a high-stress job can agree that when on vacation, you do not want to be bothered. Ati wants to leave everything behind, crack open a beer, jump in the sauna, and pretend that the eternal war with entropy does not exist. After all, that responsibility will be shouldered by Jesse until Ati has taken a deep breath, recharged his soul, and is ready to return from vacation and back into the endless battle. As a janitor, it is his ultimate duty to bring order from chaos. Das Belisadar